Hey there people, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here. So this time, on this specific video, I'm going to be talking about something that I have never ever talked about on this channel. And that is the carnivore diet, which is a diet that a lot of people are becoming aware of because there's so many people eating it, especially people that are social media influencers. And a lot of people that were vegan in the past have actually switched to this diet. So this video, what I'm going to talk about in relation to the carnivore diet is my own personal opinions, thoughts, and my expertise as a health coach as well on this diet. And I am going to talk a bit about this diet in regards to the raw carnivore diet. As you can see with a very well-known YouTuber, Three Ridge, in this video that we're going to watch together, he is actually going to show us him eating some raw chicken at a vegan festival, which I don't think is the nicest thing to do. And if you want to eat that stuff, yeah, but don't rub it in people's face that don't want to eat it. So yeah, let's watch this together. Let's go, bro. Right. brothers. Oh, hey, Ella's our nice Yeah, let's stay here. Welcome to the vegan market. So what if it was actually, if there was any, any so I'm not going to hate him at all, I don't agree with what he's doing in front of the people but yeah, each to their own. And yeah, a lot of people that get into the carnival diet say that you should only eat it raw. Just like a people that get into a raw vegan diet, they believe you should have nothing cooked whatsoever. So these people have very similar mindsets but they have different views on the different types of raw foods that you should be eating. So it makes a lot of sense to me. If we were in our natural environment, I would assume that the majority of the time that we'd be eating meat, it would be in its raw state. And when you do start to cook meat, and it starts to go brown and black, it starts to create certain carcinogenic substances on and in the meat, which are cancer-forming substances. And it can start to denature the protein and have a negative effect on the meat and kill off a lot of beneficial things within the meat. And this is what loads of raw meat-eating carnivore people out there say is so many people are having negative effects from meat due to them cooking the meat and I did learn from someone on Joe Rogan's YouTube channel recently I think it was Ben Greenfield where he said you could actually do coffee rubs on cooked meat and other various things to get rid of the carcinogenic substances on them and apparently people used to do that a lot in the past so yeah it makes sense to me that yeah, not cooking it doesn't destroy loads of things, so it could be better for you. But then you run a risk massively with parasites. And so much meat is full of parasites. And so many people at the same time have low stomach acid production or none. And if you don't have adequate stomach acid production, you're eating that and it goes within your stomach to be broken down, your stomach acid does not kill them off and then it goes in your body and then it has a hole host of negative effects on your health long term especially and it especially changes your personality and the way you think and it can bring certain emotions up to the surface such as anger a lot more and frustration so that's something that i think people need to be aware of and there is quite a few people that try a carnivore diet and they try the raw one and it doesn't make them feel good at all and someone that is a really good prime example of that is Vegel Police. He's eaten a lot of cooked meat on the carnivore diet and he's feeling quite good from it. And then he had quite a few issues at times with raw meat. And there's quite a few times where Sri Ridge and other people at certain times have ended up with certain bacteria within the body that almost killed them. And I will try and put the video here where it actually talks about that. What I tried is eating the beef uh, leg and the bone marrow inside of the bone. For whatever reason I got this bacteria called Campylobacterium enteritis something. <laughs> what I actually got was one of the rarest cases, more rare than others, people usually don't get this, is that my muscles stopped working and it took me a month now to actually get fully recovered from it 
I couldn't really open the door. All kinds of everyday things. I was sort of worried, but only a little bit. I didn't really take it that serious. I actually talked to a trainer and she said that many people got completely paralyzed from it and some people even die from it because it goes in the heart and the heart is a muscle and makes the heart stop beating. So yeah, as you can see, that was a really dangerous thing that he was doing. So that's something that you also need to be very careful with as well. So I'd say a lot of the raw carnivore people, they don't necessarily have any science to back up their claims and a lot of it's just ideology and their diet can be very dogmatic, but it does work for a lot of people. A lot of people feel really good from it. So if someone is drawn to this diet, you could give it a go, see how you feel. But would I try it out? Maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't, it depends. I would say most people that get into this diet, they're not thriving on another diet, they've tried so many other diets and they get to this point where they're willing to try anything. So yeah, maybe it's something that you would want to give a go, maybe it's something that I would want to give it a go if I had no other choice whatsoever. And also for a lot of people, most of us are used to having cooked meat. For, for a lot of people, they might find eating raw meat a bit too much of them, they get quite squeamish from it and it freaks them out a bit for understandable reasons because they're not used to it and yeah maybe this is the diet that I'm eating at the moment because as I've announced recently I'm no longer eating a high carbohydrate vegan diet if you haven't seen that video I've put a link for up above but I'm not going to be announcing for, uh, for around another 20 days or so what the diet is that I am currently eating so you have to stay tuned for that so make sure you are subscribed and you click the bell notification button next to the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to be notified of when the new videos are uploaded otherwise you will not be notified and then there is people such as Dr. Sean Baker which is one of the number one people out there promoting a cooked carnivore diet and he says that he absolutely thrives on it. He feels absolutely amazing. He's completely anti-vegan diets as well. And yeah, I could understand why it would be more appealing for someone to eat a cooked meat diet. Because like I said, most of us are used to eating meat in its cooked form and we find it more appealing. And if I was gonna choose out of either one, this would be the one that I am more drawn to. But as I mentioned earlier on, with cooked meats, at least with most cooking methods, and the longer you cook it, the more carcinogenic it can become. And like I said, there are some things you could do, such as coffee rubs, to reduce any of the carcinogenic substances that are created on the meat from the cooking process, but most people are not going to do that. And yeah, I'm now gonna show a video of Dr. Sean Baker, going to in and out and I think if I remember correctly it was around 17 burger patties with nothing on them whatsoever except for a little bit of salt and yeah this is something that he apparently does on a regular basis from what I have looked into and before I show you that video in a second I do not think it's a good idea at all going to a place like that I believe if you're eating raw meat or cooked meat that you should be getting meat that is pasture raised grass fed has no antibiotics or hormones added to it or pharmaceuticals or antibiotics the animal was never vaccinated as well it's not fed any GMO food as well and a whole host of other different specifications that I say to people that I health coach around the world because I don't get everyone switched to a vegan diet not everyone wants to do it but I say if you're going to eat meat you really need to be getting the cleanest meat possible so if you're going to somewhere such as in and out you are obviously getting some of the most unclean toxic meat possible then you're cooking it getting all the carcinogenic things with it so it's really not a good idea in my opinion so yeah let's go into this video and you can see him eating it and I will actually watch this with you. I have an animal fry, a medium poke light ice with a lemon. Nope. Mm. 16 meat patties, no bun or anything, Plus. and the water. That's it. Time to eat. So this is unusual for you or? It's typical. This would be a normal meal. <laughs> Delicious. Two pounds of goodness down the hatch. Okay, so watching that video, as I'm sure you can understand if you're into eating meat or you were before, that that could seem quite appealing to you. It's like barbecue food, but without any 
seasoning or anything added to it, which could be quite enjoyable because a lot of people like the taste of meat for understandable reasons. But, like I said, I don't think it's the healthiest thing possible. And it's around 250 grams of protein. An excess amount of protein in the body has a very negative effects on your health holistically. And an excessive amount of protein actually raises insulin levels as well, which is not good to be doing whatsoever. Unlike when you're on a ketogenic diet where you're having a lower amount of protein, it does not spike up your insulin, so then you always stay in a state of ketosis where your body's producing an abundance of ketones, which just is a very health promoting and gives you an abundance of energy within your mind and body holistically. And the thing with Sean Baker is, he's done blood work before and been interviewed by specific paleo teachers out there and leaders and gurus, you could say. And his blood work is necessarily not the best. And what I would do is actually show his blood work. So when you look at his tests, first off, they've tested his testosterone serum levels to see how much testosterone is within his blood. And it come up at 237, which is on the low end. It's actually past the lowest range for a healthy amount of that within the body, which is not a good thing. But he does exercise very intensely, so that's why it could be low. And then he's got his free testosterone levels checked within the bloodstream, and it's a 5.5. Again, it is low. It's below the lowest healthy range of 7.2. So both of those being under the low range, that's really not a good sign, but I'd actually like to see his total testosterone levels. I don't know if he's published that online. But that is the real determining factor, whether he has really got some testosterone issues going on. Because, like I said, if you've been training, these will be lower. And he does train very hard on a regular basis, but the testosterone total levels could be actually within a healthy range, and then he's absolutely fine. Then he had a test for his hemoglobin A1C, and this is a test to show whether you have pre-diabetes or diabetes or if you just have anything going on with the hemoglobin A1C, I won't say it incorrectly then, that could cause you to go in the direction of having diabetes. And also when this is high, it can cause nerve damage, heart disease and various other serious health issues that can massively shorten your lifespan and have a whole host of negative effects on your health holistically, but you're necessarily not going to see the damage from this, except for years and years and years down the line. And his is actually above the healthiest high range for this. It's actually 6.3. And as you can see here, it's 4.8 to 5.6, the reference range. So yeah, that's not really good at all. And then you've got the C-reactive protein, which this is a test to check for inflammation within the body. And actually, he passed this one really, really well. 1.10, the range is 0 0.00 to 3.00. But what I would say is, ideally, you want it to be at 0 0.00, which I've seen many vegans that have got this test done, and it comes out at that range. But he doesn't do a lot of intense exercise, like I said, which can cause more inflammation. So then if you get this test done, it can come up as a higher result. So that is just something to be aware of. And then they've tested his iron ferritin blood serum levels. And it comes out as 243 nanograms per milliliter. And the reference range is 30 to 400, which his is not low at all. It is quite high. And a lot of people suffer with iron toxicity, where they have an excess of iron within the body due to eating an abundance of meat, which has a whole host of negative effect on your health, especially long term, but also short term. But you may not see it until years down the line. So the blood work is not so great from him, but this is not me trying to show that it's bad at all, because this isn't the most extensive blood test done possible. There could be loads of tests done that show that he's really healthy in many different ways. And he says he feels really healthy as well. And he's very strong and very fit. 
And if he hadn't been training for days and days and days before and got this test done, he could actually be within the healthy range for everything except for the iron ferritin test that he'd done out of all these different tests on this. So that's just my own personal thoughts on that. And I thought it was very important for me to share that with you. And then another issue you have in this is with a raw meat diet and the cooked one, you're getting a lot of methionine which is an amino acid that's found in an abundance in meat. And there's a lot of scientific research to show that it shortens your maximum lifespan and has a whole host of negative effects on your health holistically. I'm not completely against the amino acid methionine because it does have some health benefits, but when you're getting an excessive amount, just like if you're getting an excessive amount of sodium or cholesterol, or certain vitamins or minerals, it's not a good thing whatsoever. It's about having a state of homeostasis within the body and having this balance go on. So that's my own thoughts on both of those. And I wanna add some other things as well. There's a lot of people that have not been thriving on a vegan diet that switch to either the raw carnivore or the cooked carnivore diet. They say they feel really, really good and when I listened to Ben Greenfield being interviewed by Joe Rogan recently on the Joe Rogan show, he believes something that I believe as well. So most people are having digestive issues and health issues on a vegan diet or another diet. They come to a carnivore diet and they all disappear. But they're only eating such a limited amount of food. So it isn't necessarily that the carnivore diet is healing them. It can be and quite likely could be, as Ben Greenfield said time and time again in Joe Rogan's talk where he's being interviewed and this is what I believe so it's amazing that he confirmed what I believe as well that they've eliminated all of the other foods that are affecting their digestion and health in a negative way and that's why they're getting benefits and not being healed by the meat they're getting all of the irritating foods out of their diet and not into their body so then they can feel the best every single day within the mind and body and have the most optimal digestion possible so that is just something that you might want to consider and I've known some people of my specific friend circles that I go through that have tried out eating raw meat or cooked meat only. And I remember speaking to one specifically and they said when they were going to the toilet, it just absolutely stunk, which would make sense to me. You're eating loads of dead animals in an excessive amount. So yeah, it can make sense as to why it would really smell when it comes out of you. But when they did state that, I cannot remember completely if they were on a 100% raw meat diet or a combination of the cooked one or the cooked one only. So maybe this is not an issue with the raw carnivore diet. I'm not sure. If you tried it out, let me know down below whether your poo really smells or not. And when I think back to when I was a raw vegan, I used to think, well, before we started cooking food, we never used to cook the food and we'd eat the fruit in its whole form. So if I take that type of ideology and apply it to a raw carnivore diet and think about the cooked carnivore diet, yeah, it would make sense that maybe uncooked raw meat is the best for us due to that is probably what we used to first eat in our natural environment before we discovered fire and other cooking methods. And if you look to other animals in nature, do any other animals in nature eat meat cooked? No, they don't. Unless these animals like dogs and other animals have been created into what you call pets for people to have and they're feeding them cooked meat, then yeah, they're obviously out of their natural environment and been given that. But any animal in the natural environment eats it in their raw state. And yeah, when you look into it a lot, the human anatomy, we have a very similar anatomy to a frugivore, which to me, I always used to think, and I guess I do in many ways now, that we are more designed for plant foods. But then there's a lot of people that have issues with plant foods and they don't feel good from it. But Nessa isn't the plant food's fault. They've got some underlying issues that they haven't resolved to thrive on a vegan diet when they could if they got certain tests and other things done to actually work out what the root cause of the issue and actually resolve them, then they could possibly stay on a vegan diet. But not everyone wants to go down that route, and not everyone does for one reason or another, and it's each to their own. And as you can see in this video, well, here more specifically, I'm only talking about the health aspects, because that's the thing that I want to focus upon in this video. Yes, there is also certain negative effects that this diet has on the environment, and it's also killing animals 
that do not want to die at all which isn't very nice at all but what I can say is most people that switch to the carnivore diet do it as a last resort because they don't find a solution to what's going on with them so they can actually stay on a vegan diet and feel the best that they can feel such as vegetable police tim sheath kasumi chris the list just goes on and on and on and on of people that have tried to get it to work again and again and again for them and it's just kept not working for them so that's my own personal thoughts on this diet and yeah as i mentioned earlier on if i had the choice between the two it definitely would be the cooked carnivore diet if i wanted to go more for having something that tastes good to me when I used to eat meat but if I was wanting to maybe get the best health benefits possible the raw carnivore diet would seem like the better direction to go in but like I said there seems to be some pros and cons to each of the carnivore diets and as I said I might be eating a raw carnivore diet at the moment who knows or I might be eating a raw I mean a cooked carnival diet, I went to repeat myself again. So yeah, like I said, if you want to be notified, make sure you do subscribe. If you'd like me to make any more videos on the carnival diet, then let me know down below in the comment section. Is there anything you'd like to critique on anything I shared with you today in this video? Or you want to share your own experience with a carnival diet? And if you switch from a vegan diet to a carnival diet, let us know the benefits or any negatives that you noticed and the effect it was having on the food coming out of you does it smell really bad or not let us know so we can just get some real truth from own people's experience because someone can tell you that a diet is not good for this reason that reason that reason a lot of time it's based on their own personal beliefs opinions or other opinions that they get from other people and they just have all these ideologies a lot of time they have no scientific evidence to back it up a lot of time even if there's scientific research for a diet and specific foods in it you may eat it and it may not feel good within your body when you're eating that way well you don't feel good overall so don't listen to necessarily anyone if you feel drawn to a specific diet you're not feeling good on the diet that you're on you don't think you can resolve them on the diet that you're eating then give another diet a go try it for 30 days 60 days or even 90 days and if you feel really good on it then continue to do it but obviously you need to make sure that the diet is in line with your own morals and your ethics and it just feels completely right for you to be doing it you're not doing it because you think you should be doing it when your heart's telling you i really don't want to be doing it if that makes sense so yeah if you like the video give us a thumbs up if you don't give us a thumbs down and please share this video with anyone else that you think wants to hear me talking about the carnival diet for the first time on this youtube channel and make sure to subscribe if you want to be notified of when the video is uploading i have so many videos coming on the ketogenic diet i'm going to keep making ones on the ketogenic diet as well the vegan diet weight loss calisthenics intermittent fasting water fasting dry fasting and many other different things that i can talk about in many different videos that you can learn from me specifically so you can maybe learn something that can help you go in the direction of achieving the health that you desire, the fitness levels, the energy levels, and the body as well. Like I've managed to and many other people that have followed my information consistently over time to get those results and many other more positive ones as well. So as always, stay fit, stay energetic, and go and get those gains. Peace.